In this second example of mathematical models related to the cooling experiment, um, we'll look at solar heating of swimming pool water. So my water in my swimming pool right now is quite chilly. It's too cold to swim. If we had a heater, um, we could warm up the water to where it's pleasant, and that would be nice. But um, heating is expensive, and so people look at different ways to do that. One way of warming swimming pool water is using solar heating, and the arrays look something like this. And you basically pump water in through these pipes, and the water comes in and then it goes down this array, which is absorbing solar radiation, partly due to its color. And so the water goes from cold here to warm here, where it continues back to the pool. And you pump water through this, it heats the water, and so your temperature of your pool warms up. So if we look at a swimming pool, and we have a sort of a solar array up here, there's lots of, of heat factors. There's sort of the sun, and the sun is going to heat the water in the solar array. It's going to heat the water in the pool. There's going to be heat coming from the air, just through thermal transfer, warming up the pool. There's probably some heat coming in from the ground depending on the exact temperature, some of the heat may also be going out. There's going to be evaporation of water in the swimming pool. Um, this thing has to go through a pump up here, so there's going to be some heating from pump. Pumps aren't perfectly efficient, and so they will warm the water. There'll probably be some um, heat exchange while in the pipes and in the solar ray and things like that. But I think what we're mostly concerned about here is that step right there is how much heat comes into the system. So for this question, a company's claimed that a 20 foot by 10 foot roof mounted solar array can heat water of a 25,000 gallon pool by 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm wondering if that is a, a reasonable number. So 10 degrees Fahrenheit is going to end up being, what, about 1.6, um, 10 divided by 1. It's going to be about 6 degrees Celsius, something like that. Okay, so little bits here. We have a the heat coming in, the, the radiation coming in, we need to know how much, how big that arrow is, and then we need to know what happens to it. So the, the heat from the radiation, or the energy from the, the solar radiation is gonna to relate to the intensity of the sunlight. And so I did a, a Google search on solar intensity, and they say that there should be 5.96 kilowatt hours per square meter per day in Fresno. So that's a, a mean solar intensity. Um, the 25,000 gallon pool, um, that ends up being 9.46 times 10 to the seven grams. That meter squared, that 20 by 10 foot, um, Let's see, I'm going to need to do some conversions on that, but that's 200 square feet. And maybe I can go ahead and take that 200 square feet, and I'll take feet squared to meters squared, and that would let me go to kilowatt hours per day. And then I can use some other conversions to go to kilojoules per day. And um, eventually joules per day. And then that heat's going into the pool. In the pool, it should be the MC sub S delta T. And so if we feed that in there, then we ought to be able to get to um, a temperature change um, per day. 
So let's take a peek at that. Um, 200 square feet, and it's roughly, well, not roughly, it's 10.76 square feet per one square meter. And then in this equation, we have the 5.96 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. So my meter square cancel, my feet square cancel. One kilowatt hour is 3,600 kilojoules. So that's going to get rid of the kilowatt hour. I'm now in kilojoules per day. And then I'll go one kilojoule is a thousand joules. And dimensional analysis isn't really going to work for my last step of going to temperature. I'm going to have to, to pause there a little bit. Um, I ran this through. I got 3.988 times 10 to the 8 joules per day. That seems really high. And let's see how it's going to be about two sig figs, let's, let's say. Now here, we wanted to know what temperature change is possible. That's going to give us a number to compare to their claim of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so <clears throat> that comes back to this equation. I want to solve for delta T is Q over M C sub S and my heat number is 3.988 times 10 to the 8 joules per day. My mass was the 9.46 times 10 to the 7 grams. And C sub S, let's just count it as pure water, joules per gram Celsius. And this comes out to be 1.0 degrees Celsius per day of heating. Now, that doesn't make sense in some ways. Something's wrong. If my pool warmed up by one degree Celsius per day, it would be boiling by the end of the summer, and that, that simply doesn't happen. So that means there's something wrong with our model. And if we come back here, we only looked at one arrow. Now, as the pool warms up down here, this evaporation arrow is going to change. That's going to be the biggest one, but the heat exchange with the air will change the heat exchange with the ground will change and will quickly as the temperature rises the magnitude of these arrows will change also and we need to take that into account. I suspect the evaporation is going to be the major one and I'm not going to go into that now but it might increase at one degree a day initially when you turn the pump on but at some point that's going to flatten out as the rate of evaporation out of the pool increases. So when mathematical models give you unreasonable answers, you need to um, reconsider um, whether you've included the right um, factors in that model. And in this example, we included only heat from the sun going into the pool to increase the temperature. We could look at other things like this as we um, changed this model. We could compare the fact, effect of size per temperature change, but we could also look at materials, and not all materials absorb light the same way. We didn't factor in loss um, due to reflection and things like that, but if we had a material that more efficiently absorbed that solar energy, we could look at and model um, how that would affect the temperature increase and, and things like that. So. Um, lots of things you can do with this one, but this was an example of where my initial model wasn't detailed enough um, to solve my, my question.